Eleven percent alcohol it doesn't even. I could get. I could get you sober drinking this all night. Yeah, yeah. It'd bring you back from Bordeaux, right? Yeah, With the exactly. Taper, taper off. Exactly. Okay. Start it out. Happy New Year. 107? 108? 111. 111. This isn't sequential. We're shooting the New Year's show right now. Oh, this is a New Year's show. This is a New Year's show. Okay. Hey, Internet. I'm Chaz. I'm Dan. Welcome to Wine is Serious Business, episode 111. Happy New Year. You'll probably be watching this New Year's Day if I have, have it together and get it posted at the right time. Um, but, uh, you know, as you tell, this is uh, some local Pinot Noir. Not your normal festive stuff, but uh, we talked about it a little bit. And didn't want to do the champagne, didn't want to do stuff like that this year because we really want to try and drive our focus in on Oregon wines. Absolutely. And we're going to start. That's what we love. Yeah, we're going to start yeah. 2012 out Oregon by Pinos. kind of committing to that, showing off some local stuff, and hope, hopefully, you know, we've been doing a lot of that on the show, but we want to really, really stay true to that throughout this year. Absolutely. I, I'm always excited to drink more Pinot. Yeah, right? And, and in this case, uh, well, we've got a new one. We've got the Teutonic Wines 2010 Laurel, Laurel Vineyard. Mm -hmm. the, the lowest alcohol Pinot I've ever seen, 11%. Uh, and then we've got the Ayers 2010 Willamette Valley Pinot, one which is true to my heart. I've purchased Ayers, the Willamette Valley blend, year on year since 2007. It's always delicious wine. Uh, I'm excited to try Yeah, so it's 2010's current release stuff. Yep. Uh, let's get this into the glass. This is, yeah, Teutonic Wine Company, Laurel Vineyard, uh, Barnaby and Olga, friends of mine. I get to hang out with them for a while in Germany. Love talking to them about their, what, what they're doing with the winery. It's always unique stuff, low alcohol, fresh, you know, fresh juice. I love the label, by the way. Just, yeah. Just wanted to say that. The label and the bottle shape, kind of cool. I like it. Bottle wine, Teutonic Nights, yeah. Typically, your Riesling bottle, they want to do something interesting with that. It's really cool. Yeah. All right. First off, this is one of the lightest Pinot Noirs I've ever seen. Yeah. It's a touch shade. It's, it's a touch darker than some rosés I've seen. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. Hmm. Kind of like roses. I'm getting like more yeah, like, like a big, big, time big dark floral. floral note on there. Because I wanted to say like a vine, like a whole whole cluster sort of sure. thing. Like I've got, I'm getting some of the vines, but it's not... Just the the green sort of stemmy component. No, we're getting like roses and sort of like a dried, sometimes some somewhat fresh, somewhat dried. It's a bit of strawberry stuff going on here too. Oh, yeah. It's not like the super dark like any blackberries or thick cherry skins that you get out of some. This is a brighter Pinot. You know, a mineral, a touch of minerality too, which is I, I attribute to like a chalkboard or chalk. Yeah. Um, really interesting nose. Um, yeah. Just super easy drinking. Man, this is clean, bright, great acidity all the way across. A little bit of like grapefruit flavors, the strawberries again. Zippy. What's weird about this wine is that it is so light. But whereas you will encounter light wines uh, from time to time, or, or wines I should say that are full in some places and have gaps in the other one, this is like the whole thing is turned down five notches. Like... You know, uh, another say like we drink we drink some 2009 wines earlier today, and you know you got the intensity up at like a nine or a ten, and this is like the intensity is at a four or five, but there's no gaps in it. It's just sort of fruity and nice and great acidity, right? You see like grapefruit sort of acidity and balance. Like all the components are in balance all the way across, which is really cool to see. It's just like really bright, friendly, approachable. You're getting just like this little touch. Of richness in the background, which I'm, I'm leaning towards attributing it to a little bit of oak treatment. I'm not even sure. This wine might, ah, I probably saw some oak, probably like neutral oak or something like that. Uh, but, you know, just a little bit of richness in the back end, but man, it's friendly, low alcohol, e just easy sipping. Easy sipping. Um, might be too light for some people. Like, if you're expecting a Pinot Noir from like, uh, some other producers that are able to pull off 13% in, in 2010, this is not that. Nope. That said, I think it's a very easy play to say that, you know, this wine pairs well with food. But having past experiences with wines in the alcohol range of 14.5, 14%, which happened a lot in 2009, those, type, those foods somewhat struggle with food because of the alcohol. Like, you'll pick up on the alcohol despite the food, and it might detract from the food. This thing is like, it's like drinking a fruit juice. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's not complex. It's not like that, I, I, I'm not knocking on it here. Mm -hmm. It's not that complex. It's not that compelling, but it's so easy and just, you don't even, it, it's, 
Yeah. It doesn't take your mind off anything. It's just super easy and delicious. Um, I like it a lot, and it's 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 like playing outside of what the normal range for Oregon Pinot is for me, but in a good way. You know, it's those of you who love California Pinot and rip on Oregon for generally being too light. This totally is going to be up your <laughs> no, alley. No. Um, but if you you know like the like full acidity, a little bit of minerality, just that those lighter flavors. It brings it home. Uh, I, I'm really digging it, and and it's fifteen dollars too. Uh, this is a different wine. Yeah. And if you like Oregon Pinot, you owe it to yourself to at least try it because this is something completely different than what the norm is. And that's kind of a cool and thing well about these done. guys. Yeah, they're doing a ton of unique things, like interesting vineyards, right? Really focused winemaking. I like it. Yeah, I like so, it a lot. Interesting stuff. I'm gonna I'm gonna take it to eighty-eight points. I think. Like some good excitement, but still definitely on the simpler side, right? The flavors are really direct, uh, but, but really accessible. Again, like crowd pleaser, great welcome wine. I, you know, I, I struggle with this because you you sort of have a, a basis for what wine is. Like when I go Oregon Pinot, there's certain things I look for. Like okay, this much intensity with the fruit, this much intensity with the structure. Are they balanced? Whatever. This is balanced, but it's like completely. Like I, I keep saying different. It is so much different, but. Um, I like it, undeniably, 89 points, and I think it's delicious, and if you, I mean, I know people, if you're going to watch our show, you drink Oregon Pinot, you owe it to yourself to at least check a bottle out, because it's, yeah. it's different, it's so much different, but it's well done in that. It's, it's, and, and at 15 bucks, it's, yeah. it's experiment yeah, range, it, right? It, like, it is experiment Share it with some friends, try yeah. something new, it's cool. Wine number two, Ayers, 2010, Willamette well Valley. Done. Very consistently... An excellent bottle, right? This yep. has been. Did we we did like the two thousand eight maybe we on the, the show? We okay, did the that's where I went and bought a bunch of it because the 08 Willamette Valley. I drank my last bottle of it recently, and still just a powerhouse and so balanced. I mean, awesome. If you like like big Oregon Pinot, I'm not big, but as far as alcohol range, but like big as far as intensity, which 08, well done 08s are done like that across the board. Man, the 08 killed it. So yeah, I've had the 09, then 2010. This is a producer I've had a lot of respect for, but haven't drank a whole lot of, which I, I kind of even regret. Like, I've been wanting to get more into it, because I, I hear good things from so many people about Ayers, and every experience I've had with them has been rock solid. So when I saw this on the shelf, kind of like getting wines for a show, I'm like, yeah, we should check in on we this should. again. The price has come up a little bit. This is now just under just under 20 bucks, or right around 20 bucks, Which... Still a decent value at that point. And, and like worth still, it. Yeah. Still good wine. Uh, we'll, we'll see. Right, but, yeah. Yeah, but... Uh, Probably where... I mean, if the, assuming the quality maintains, right? Assuming the quality maintains, yeah. But, I mean, all of his single vineyard stuff, I think we were talking about this earlier, it's... Wow. His single vineyard stuff disappears instantly. Because and the I price point is so, too, yeah. so good, right? It's like 25 to $32 a bottle for the top-end single vineyard stuff. Yeah. Killer. Cool right. stuff. Yeah. So this is Oregon Pinot. Fascinating yeah. contrast here, right? Yeah. This is like, this is a big boy, right? It's so like mm -hmm. just jumping out of the glass, full spicy, like uh, dark cherry skins, a little bit of raspberry stuff going on there, cloves. Even grapes. There's a, there's a strong red grape component that's sort of undeniable. Like yeah. think, think of like uh, think of like when we've been at wineries that have the open fermenters. Like yeah, it's a little fruit. Just, yeah, yeah, very very fruity, like early early open fermenters. A lot of red grape component, but man, the, the cherry fruit's jumping out strong too. Yeah, it's yep, powerful, a lot of complexity. Yep. Getting some good black pepper spice right down the middle here, along some some uh, oak flavors, kind of giving some richness right in the center of the palate, and really good dark cherry flavors running down the sides. I think you pretty much nailed it there. There's like a definitely a peppery component to this. Almost like a toasted wood sort of thing too, like, um, but the flavor is dark on the dark side, old, dry cherries, maybe some dried cranberry. Oh yeah, um, nice. And, and, yes. uh, and, and while we're talking about tart fruit here, there's there's an underlying layer of richness that keeps it from being just tart fruit, like we talk about like tart cherries sometimes. This is like tart dried cherry, so there's a sugary, rich component to that fruit. Was well, nice. Yeah. Acidity is kind of slow to come in, but it gets nice and full on the back. Really sits on the back of the palate. Mm. Kind of like that sensation, leaning towards kind of uh, kind of some tart grapefruit in character. Mm -hmm. A little bit of that ruby red flavor coming through. 
and a lot of that, that flavor left over and lingering on the palate into the finish. This has a considerable length finish on it with a, like a chalky sort of feel to it. Tannins are definitely there uh, after the acidity sort of dissolves away. Um, a well done Oregon Pinot and a, a drastic contrast from the Teutonic wine. That was, mm -hmm. that's uh, kind of wild to have them on the same show. Yeah, honestly. night and day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> night and day, absolutely. Um, that said, another fantastic effort from Ayers. Like, if you're looking for a, a, a delicious Oregon Pinot that has uh, a lot of a lot of intensity, well, and this could be just me with the Teutonic wine. I don't know, but balanced, super delicious, ripe fruit. Weird to say in 2010, but uh, yeah, bringing it. 80, yeah. 88, 88 plus for me. Nice wine, nice wine. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go 89 plus on this for me. Like I'm feeling just a little bit of complexity. Um, I like how the spice, the fruit, and the richness play together in the middle of the palate. Good point. And yeah. and and there's just just great balance again. And uh, and another wine that I think would please a lot of people. Like there's really Absolutely. just no rough edges on either of these nope. that would turn people off. Like right, if you like your wines lighter, if you like your wines darker, right? There's some preference there. But I think these are accessible to almost anybody. Uh, really happy with both. Both coming. You know, this is you know right around twenty bucks, just under. This is at fifteen. Both worth your time to check out. Incredible QPR on both of these. Yep. Um, Especially the Ayers. I think the Ayers is going to be more of a crowd pleasing style with its intensity. The Teutonic is so different that. But man, gotta try it. It's weird. So for our question of the day on the New Year's episode, help us do the job we talk about doing. I want you guys to respond with an Oregon Pinot Noir producer. And I'm not going to promise, because this is a, that's a good way to get ourselves into a tough spot. We're going to work really hard to taste every producer that shows up in the comments to this episode through 2012. Yes. Tell us tell us what we need to taste, because we've definitely fell on some wines that we, we try year over year, because they sort of give us a, a base as, yep. to, as to what to expect, right? We, we, we know the wines well enough. But push us outside of that. Like, there are so many producers now, like... And nobody responds to the question of the day. We know people watch this show. It's really yeah. weak that nobody comes back with answers. Oh, so here's an easy one. Yeah, but, it, it is. Right, and, and, right. and I think part of it, we need to be more engaging, right? Like, Good point. We're going to respond. You put stuff in the answers, we're going to try and seek it out and drink it. So thanks for watching, and we're looking forward to a great 2012 with you guys. We'll see you guys next time.